a really quick vid and it's gonna talk about stuff that I've already made videos about but then again I do find sometimes I do repeat my videos just in case you didn't see the older ones that I did a bunch of years back but here's the Dremel <laughs> and here's the base plate <laughs> and my friend Dave already knows where this is going <laughs> Now, I, I will say that this is this is the we I got that Dremel. I think Sandy bought it for me the first year we were together, so it's got to be eighteen years old. I, I I don't know. It's it's a very old Dremel, uh, but it's unstoppable. Uh, I mean, I'm sure if you put some work into it, you could stop it. But um, it's very strong. It's got a lot of power to it, and uh, it's very well used. I've done a lot of work around the house with it when it's needed. Did a lot of Lego modifications with it. Did a lot of drilling into base plates with it. But when I built that table saw, my Lego table saw using the big Dremel, and you can see it's got a little little blade right there. Um, I didn't want to keep on taking it out. So I actually went over to Home Depot that day. <laughs> I bought this Dremel. I thought they had one that was looked remarkably similar. They had like, back in the day, that was the only Dremel that was available. <laughs> it was like, you could not buy any other kind of Dremel. I, I didn't see any. Uh, back in the day. So that one was the standard, quote unquote, standard Dremel that you could buy. And it came with a flex, flex connector. So you could actually go around corners and whatever. It doesn't matter. I hardly ever used that. So, but that Dremel has been through a lot and now it's built into that table saw and it still does the job. It does the, helps me cut Lego bricks when I want to cut Lego bricks. And so I'm leaving that set up, quote unquote, as is. And instead of me keep on constantly removing the Dremel, because I have to set up the fence and the, and the blade every time, I just go and buy a new one. And then when I got to the Home Desk spot, Home Depot, <laughs> Home Depot, uh, I guess a couple years ago now, uh, and I bought this one. They had five or six different varieties of Dremel in, in the Home Depot. Forget about online, I'm sure there's a lot more. And this was the smallest one. And it wasn't the cheapest one, but it was the smallest one. They had one that was slightly bigger than this, but it was cheaper, but it, because bigger means easier to build, I guess. But I thought, I'm gonna go for a really, really tiny one because this is almost like a pencil, right? You can just hold it like a pencil and maybe do some CNCing, like manual CNCing with your hand. And I thought, this is a fantastic idea. Because now I got the big one over there, just in case I need to take it out of there to do something very big, and I have this little tiny one. The issue I find is that this thing doesn't have nearly, not even close to the horsepower that that one has. I mean, it still spins as fast. Straight up, it still spins as fast, but it doesn't have the horse. It gets binded. It stops. So I'm going to be drilling, and warning, warning, trigger warning. <laughs> I'm going to be uh, very, very soon. Uh, this is actually supposed to be this way. Uh, very, very soon, I'm going to be drilling holes into this base plate where all the pips are going to go. So if you don't want to watch me destroying or trashing, as some people say, trashing an old classic space base plate, go away. <laughs> you're, you're, you're welcome to stay. I'm not kicking you out. But if you stay, it's on you. Because I'm going to... <laughs> my drum <drone. laughs> And see, it, it has variable speed, this one, right? Not a, nearly as much as the other one, but it, it goes the same RPM. But what I found is, again, this is the, this is the thing, so you go like that. And it centers itself right into the hole, right? And you drill a hole. And then you see on this side, it leaves the ring around. So basically it makes it into a hollow stud, like the one by one round bricks or the other headlight bricks. It's basically identical. And let me just turn this off before I cut my finger off. Um, let's see if I have an antenna near here. I think I'll just use this off as, well, no, I got one right there. So it basically, if you put an antenna in there, it's exactly now like a hollow stud because the headlight, I mean, the uh, antennas fit perfectly in there, <laughs> right? And it's not as binding, it's, it's a little more loose than uh, the the one by one uh, plates with those those round things that have in the original classic space and whatever the the, the vertical stud on it, a uh, hollow stud on it. But it, it's close enough, and it actually fits a Rob Hendrix life light. And this is my friend Dave asked me uh, on a previous video what the size of this bit is. It's one eighth. It's just a standard one eighth uh, wooden drill bit, which drills fantastically through plastic. I don't know if this one came out of my drill index in my garage, in my wood shop, or this one came with my Dremel kit. I honestly couldn't tell you. It's short, so I'm thinking it came out of my Dremel kit. 
but you guys got a standard one eighth bit, you're fine. Not a masonry bit, not a steel bit. Well, I guess this would be a steel bit. Uh, not a flat bottomed uh, wood chamfer bit, whatever you call those guys, uh, but just a standard, you can see the top there, just a standard drill bit. So let's keep on going. And then we'll go to the center. Again, wherever the drill bit is, make sure your fingers aren't. So don't put your finger behind here like that and thinking that you're not gonna drill through your finger. <laughs> I'm holding it right on the edge. Because uh, again, and I'm wearing my safety glasses, but you just don't see that. Because even, even though the Dremel is way over here and this is just plastic, if something breaks off, you seriously don't want things going into your eye. You really don't, that'd be bad. <laughs> so again, a warning. And again, I'm not gonna tell you what, I'm not gonna tell you what you should do with your life uh, and what risks you wanna take but I wear safety glasses because I want to keep my eyes. I made it uh, past a half a century mark uh, with my eyes intact. And I still don't need any glasses yet. Think, see, see, it stops. It does not have the horsepower that the big one does. But if you drill slowly, slowly enough, it doesn't bind. And as I say, the one eighth bit centers itself right in the middle. So you don't even have to like, you don't have to, ah, I'm going to take off the edge of the, the stud. I mean, you can work at it, and actually I've done it a few times where I either was an angle or whatever, and I wrecked the stud, not necessarily in here, but in other pieces. But um, if you go straight in, you'll never wreck the stud. At least that's my... Oh, in. <laughs> that was too fast. And there we go. Look at that. And then the last side, again, try not to drill into my hand, that you died. Now at one point, there we go, it's done. 12 holes in one base plate, <laughs> one classic space base plate. And yes, right on here in the back, if you can read it in the, in the light, says uh, 1978 Lego AS Interlego AG. <laughs> so yes, this thing is, uh, it came off the assembly line out of the uh, press when I was 11 years old. And yes, I just drilled, I just drilled 12 holes into it. And yes, these things were discontinued not too long after 1978. And yes, you can't buy them new anymore. Oh well, they're mine. <laughs> so, so again, I, I, I'm at the point now where I love this hobby and I love the people in it. But if this if this hobby is going to have gatekeepers like Star Trek, uh, the gatekeepers who hate all the new Star Trek, just go away. I, I don't need to talk to you. I've adored Star Trek since I was four years old. And they've had hits and misses across all series. Every single one of them. My worst series is DS9. It's most people's favorites because of the conflict. But I was watching a better show called Babylon 5 at the time. <laughs> And I'm not saying uh, Bragg and all those guys ripped off JMS because JMS pitched Babylon 5 to Paramount before DS9 uh, started to do the serialized or the the episode, yeah, the serialized, the, the, the whole season. The, like season one and two were episodic, just like every other Star Trek show. They had a little bit of a theme with Cisco and the... Uh, and the uh, the the Bajoran, Bajoran gods and the, I forget what they call those things the 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 little things with the hourglass looking things in my it's been a long time since I've seen DS9, but it wasn't a main theme of Star Trek and all of a sudden Star Trek uh, DS9 and season three got into Dominion War which honestly I liked I mean I'm not saying when I say DS9 is the my least favorite I'm not saying I hated it <laughs> I've seen as far as I know every single iteration every single episode of Star Trek. And I read, quote unquote, most of the books until 15 years ago when I stopped buying them. But I've read uh, voraciously all the old Star Trek books. Uh, and I've seen every single episode and every single movie. Uh, well, the movies I've seen dozens of times. Anyway, my point is, <laughs> DS9 is my least favorite of all the Star Treks. And that's saying, I not that I don't like it. I still like it. But it wasn't great for me. It, it, it didn't adhere, in my opinion, to the Roddenberry's vision. But on the flip side, I'm not a gatekeeper. 
watch DS9, love DS9, talk about DS9, talk about Cisco and, and Bashir and everybody. I, I will be right there in the conversation with you. <laughs> One of the best episodes across the entire Star Trek franchise is, is, is more, uh, more triples, more troubles. Uh, I mean, it was, the I think, the 30th anniversary and, and where uh, Dax and the Cisco went back to K7 space station. I, just, it was just a brilliantly well-done episode. And, of course, it fit right into the entire Star Trek theme. And, and, and they've done that a bunch of times in the new series, whatever. They even had Unification 3 and Discovery, which I absolutely adored. When uh, she looks up what Spock did with his life a thousand years before uh, the, the time that it, you know, and the Romulans and the Vulcans came back together, I mean, I just love Star Trek. I loved I loved the reboot movies. I loved the new series. I loved the card. I mean, it wasn't fantastic. It's not going to trump TNG for me. The card was okay. I really liked it, and and I loved Discovery, and I loved adored Lord Dex, right. But anyway, there, there are things out there that I might not appreciate, <laughs> right? Like, uh, as much as other people, such as DS9. But I'm not going to say, oh, it's the crappiest show and you guys shouldn't watch it. I'm not going to do that. Because if you love DS9, then you love DS9. And I, and I, I hope you do. Uh, it's a great show. And I, I would never say, you shouldn't watch, you shouldn't watch that show. Uh, because I'm not a gatekeeper. You enjoy your stuff your way. I'm going to enjoy my stuff my way. And since this is my stuff, <laughs> it's got letters on it. I put them there. Uh, Lunar Repair 01. The repair station is right here in the layout. I think it adds to it. I think the lit up lights add to it. Your mileage may vary. And if your mileage varies, go drive somewhere else. <laughs> If you don't like my mileage, if you don't like the way I'm driving my stuff, you don't have to be here. Anyway, um, I, I, I did this kind of tongue-in-cheek because uh, more than one person has talked about or responded to my videos where uh, I've done modifications to Lego pieces from 1978 that you can no longer buy new and you, can, you can't really get used anyway. Uh, and you, I'm, I'm sure you can pick this up on, on, on uh, BrickLink. And I've actually, uh, straight up, in the past year, buying used lots, I picked up two or three more. So it's not like it's, this isn't, I don't know. I, I, I keep on coming back to the comparison with stamp collecting because my uncle, as I mentioned, has a massively huge stamp collection that's gotta be worth lots. And stamp collecting to him is, is, was his hobby since he his, his earliest memories, even when he was back in Holland, I believe. And he's carried it through 80 years of his life. And uh, he absolutely adores it. And he can tell you what stamp it is and where it came from and blah, blah, blah. And, and he even used to go down to the post office to make sure they were canceling the stamps properly because they were just being cheap and crappy. And all of a sudden you get the smudges and whatever. And he didn't like that. So <laughs> he's passionate about stamp collecting. And he knows all the minutiae and all the ins and outs of stamp collecting. But he never, ever told anybody else how to collect stamps. Right? And, and, and he's got to be one of the most... I, there's a, I, I forget what stamp collecting is called. There's actually a name for stamp collecting, stamp collectors. But he's got to be one of the most, uh, as far as I understand, one of the most top people in Canada who collects stamps. He's got to be up there. And yet, he never ever came to anybody else that, you're doing this wrong. <laughs> you can't do it that way. No, he never did. And, 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 and so, you enjoy your hobby your way. Absolutely, absolutely enjoy your hobby your way. If, if, if something happens and you inherit my collection, you can do whatever you want with it. <laughs> and you can shake your fist at me. You shake your fist in the general direction of me. Hey, that Dave guy, he drilled holes in these, you know, but, but it's going to be in the end, 13 landing pads. Because that's what it's going to be. I have 13 landing pads in the layout. Uh, and uh, most of them already have holes. <laughs> so I think I got three, two or three more to go, and I won't be videotaping everyone. Uh, but I'm going to be drilling 13. But over there, over there, I have probably 50 more. <laughs> so I'm not, me, myself, I'm not worrying about, and I'm not even, and I, I can't even say this, I'm not even losing 13 landing pads. Because again, when, when you're in a layout, in a show, you put these things on here, forget the lights, if you don't even use the lights. I, I I rarely see somebody put these landing pads in a in a display that doesn't have some sort of like this on them because this is again how the six nine eight zero instructions say for you to do it in the first place, right? So all of a sudden you have this landing pad 
that has those holes covered up with trans colored one or trans translucent one by one round bricks. Now show me a hole. Show me, you can't. So stop talking about trashing. Stop. This isn't trashed. This isn't what's his name in Toy Story who when he modified his toys, really modified them so you would see that they're modified. Right? And again, I'm not even going to trash him because those were his toys. You can do whatever he wants with them. <laughs> but, but like, there's, look, 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 not trash. And those letters come off. Like if this is, the letters are not permanent. They're stickers. They will come off. Just like my, the copper on my monorail track. Somebody gave me flack years ago that because I put copper on my monorail. You've ruined the monorail track. What are you talking about? It's peel and stick. <laughs> it comes off. <laughs> Like, they're stickers. <laughs> Go away. I just... Gatekeepers always bothered me since the dawn of time. I remember back pre-internet, the only thing that you could talk about is, like, you know, with, with friends and stuff. And I played Dungeons and Dragons, obviously, because I'm that kind of geek. <laughs> and, 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 and people say, oh, you're playing it wrong. Well, th th this group plays it this way. Like, I don't... We're having fun. We're not destroying the game. We're not destroying the Lego. We're not destroying anything. We're not trashing anything. Uh, I don't know. I, I just, <laughs> just find some people think their opinion should trump everybody else's opinion when it comes to whatever they're passionate about. And I don't play that game. I've never played that game. You want to enjoy something your way. Then you go enjoy it your way. I, I personally, like, the, the camp, even, even the drinking, like, I don't have a religious or a moral or ethical or anything against people drinking. I just don't do it. I'm not really re at all remotely interested. I have my own personal reasons, but we don't have to go into those. But I, I, I've always been designated driver back in, back in the day <laughs> when I uh, hanging out with my, cause I really didn't get married till I was well in my thirties. Um, so from 19 to 20 or 30, when we're out with my friends, they would get, not rip roaring drunk because they're not stupid, but they would get drunk and I would drive them home every single time, every single Friday night. Well, not every single Friday, but every time we got together and we're out drinking, <laughs> they're drinking, I'm having water. <laughs> Back in the day it was Sprite, but now it'd be just water. And I would drive them home and I loved it. And I would never, ever tell them, don't get drunk. Oh, you're drinking too much. No, no, you, you do you. Like, honest to God, you do you. You've taken all the precautions. You have me <laughs> built in to take you home. You can do whatever you want. As long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, do whatever you want. I'm here to help you. I'm here to walk you to your door, tuck you in your bed, whatever. <laughs> Which I had to do sometimes. <laughs> so, but, but it makes for good stories now, you know, 20 years later. Um, but... I'm not a gatekeeper. I'm not one of these people to tell you or anybody else what they should and should not do with their lives as long as it's not interfering with somebody else's life. Where I put my line, where I draw my line, my crosshairs, my line, is if you are on this side and you're hurting somebody else, your actions are hurting somebody else. That's the only time I'm going to say, that's got to stop. On this side, not hurting anybody else is my, and again, talked about this a little bit, I am a personal libertarian with my life and I expect everybody else to be a personal libertarian when it comes to their ideas about my life. <laughs> Leave me alone. Uh, as long as I'm not hurting anybody else. And I did not hurt this base plate at all. This base plate doesn't have feelings. <laughs> it really doesn't. And it's not even remotely trash because I respect my hobby. I respect, I don't mean, I don't have a personal you know, relationship with my Lego. <laughs> That'd be odd. But I, I respect my hobby. I respect the people in it. I respect, I, I want to take care of my stuff. I want to take care of my Lego collection. And I want to, and I want to have good shows. And I want to, uh, you know, hang out with my friends at these shows. I want, I want to like talk Lego with all my friends. But the second somebody comes up to me and says, hey, you, you just trashed this piece. I'm going, get out of my face. <laughs> Like straight up, do not even remotely talk to me now. I'm not interested in your whatever's in your head where you think that you have the, I don't, <laughs> don't want to say a bad word right now, where you think you have the authority, the need, like uh, the need to tell somebody else how they can or how they cannot appreciate this hobby. 
And it's just like those gatekeepers who keep on saying all the new Kurtzman stuff sucks. Nobody should watch it. Like you can say, you can say it sucks till the cows come home. You can say uh, uh, Picard and a lot of people did. A lot of people, oh, that sucks. Fine. That's your opinion. <laughs> Honest to God, that's your opinion. Uh, and it, it, you can even make the case that it sucks. You can say, oh, this, that, and the other thing, and the continuity, and blah, 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 and whatever. Sure, for you, I happen to love it. So when you say it, something sucks, that's your prerogative. You can absolutely tell it. You're, you can actually say, that really sucks. That's really bad. But the second you say, therefore, nobody else should watch this, you go away now. <laughs> you stop right there. You do not have any authority on anybody else and what they do with their life, period. Nothing. And I will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody at any time who thinks that their their opinion their their moral justification has to be enforced on other people like no not ever not ever when it comes to this kind of stuff only when they cross that line to damaging other people when their actions are impacting negatively on other people that's my line that's my libertarian personal line everything else i'm a socialist <laughs> <laughs> and business and government and whatever else. But uh, personally, libertarian, live and let live. Honest to goodness, live and let live. I did this for a reason. I, I was thinking all day long because I, I knew it was going to come down here and modified it. And I was going to do it live on camera, all 12 holes, because I knew it was going to piss somebody off if they ever get around to watching it. <laughs> oh, well, sucks to be you. You wait, I'm going to do three more. I probably, again, I'm not going to do it on video, but I'm going to do three more. Sucks to be you. I, I hope it bothers you because <laughs> I am, I'm a little bit in a vendetta mood. <laughs> I really am. Uh, I, I have stopped uh, doing my tirades on Twitter and Facebook about um, stuff that I'm not, not going to talk about or even talk, get into politics here because this is not my political channel. Um, but I have put that aside because, again, you're not going to convince anybody else that uh, their uh, ideals are idiotic and harmful to society. Uh, they're not going to listen because Facebook and Twitter are not at all remotely the um, venues to discuss nuances of what's good for society and what's bad for society. I have my opinion, uh, which is backed up by evidence. <laughs> And they have their opinion, which is not backed up by evidence uh, and experts and whatever else and stats. Uh, and so, but they're not going to change. They're not going to change. They're not going to listen to me. I mean, I wouldn't listen to me. Uh, and so why am, I, why, why am I getting my backup? Why am I getting my knickers in the knot? Why am I, that's an old expression, by the way, getting your knickers in the knot. Why am I getting my, uh, my anxiety and my, oh, my social justice going when these guys don't give a rat's patootie at all? They just want to do what they want to do. So go ahead, knock yourself out. As long as you're not bugging me, not as long as you're not impacting me, I am going to avoid you right now because what you are actually demonstrably doing is harmful to society. But I'm not going to, I, me, I am not changing your mind. <laughs> I, 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 I laid it out for you as clear as possible using stats and data and the medical experts and blah, blah, blah. And you want to walk still in that direction? You go walk in that direction. I'm going to be over here. <laughs> so this is, the, this is the antithesis of my whole life motive of uh, I'm walking in this direction. If you want to come along with me, you come right ahead. But if those people want to walk in that direction, which I know, I know is personally harmful to society, I have no authority over you to change your mind. So knock yourself out. See you, bye. <laughs> so, I, I don't need to, I can hide in my basement paleo. <laughs> so, I have enough to do here without worrying about interfacing with you, interacting with you in the real world. Um, so anyway, my rant's hopefully over. I can't think of anything else I want to say. Uh, I do know that gatekeepers drive me around the bend. They've had my entire life. Um, and, uh, even, even as I mentioned the DS nine versus Babylon five thing from way back in the day, I, that, that it was sort of right at the beginning of the internet. It was, it was a thing between DS nine fans and Babylon five fans. Now I appreciate Babylon five more because I love Babylon five right from the pilot than DS nine. 
Uh, but I like DS9. I'm not saying DS9 is crap because of Babylon 5. No, I like DS9. I've seen all the episodes of DS9. I just didn't think it compared to TNG and even Voyager. And some people keep on saying Voyager is the worst. The Voyager is the worst series. And I get that. Steve Shives, I fully, fully understand everything he says about Voyager and, and how, 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 and I think I'm not going to speak for him, but I, I, I've listened to him a lot about his Voyager stuff. My point on Voyager, and it could have been so much better just by the whole premise of Voyager, and they were going to do it, and they chickened out. Voyager's was going to be basically what Battlestar Galactica did just a few years later, where all things that happened in one episode impacted them later episodes. <laughs> because they have no way of fixing their starship because there's no star bases around. So, and they even laid it out in the pilot. They even space specifically said, oh, we only have well, 22 photon torpedoes and we're stuck in the Delta Quadrant. And yet somebody has a video on YouTube that says, I think they shot 78 <laughs> the entire series. <laughs> and they never mentioned it yet. They, they set it up in the pilot that, this, oh, they, they set up exactly, well, not everything, but exactly... This is, they're limited what they have and they have to make it back home with what they have and picking up stuff as they can. Uh, B B Battlestar Galactica did that very, very first season, I think, when they ran out of fuel. <laughs> it basically was, it was a, or, the, or the, wa the water, because they did basically the same thing they did in the original series, 1978 series, where they took the penal colonies where uh, uh, Richard Hatch showed up again, which uh, one of my favorite episodes is when uh, the Zarek was there. Um, uh, because they did the same episode in the original series as well as the reboot where they had to go get water off the ice planet and they used the, 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 um, the, the people in jail, the people in the... Uh, locked up to do it. <laughs> so I thought that was great. I thought it was brilliant because, I, again, I love the original Battles for Galactica. Um, here's me going on for 26 minutes. <laughs> so, so that was supposed to go somewhere and I forgot where it was going to go. Uh, I, 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 like, I, I like a lot of stuff. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, Voyager was supposed to be... We had this damage to the ship on this episode because of the uh, Kardashians. No, what were those guys called? I think they're called Kardashians. Whatever. Not no, that's a DS9. Um, the guys with the stupid curlers in the hair in the first season, I hated them. Absolutely, they were worse than the Ferengi in the first season of TNG. Uh, there was such a car caricature of bad, bad, uh, bad guys. <laughs> like they weren't Romulan and Ringling. Uh, I can't remember the uh, the, the, the 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 plague. Uh, those guys, the Vosh or whatever, they were pretty scary. Like the with the all the ripping off people and taking their skin and bone and stuff like that. That was a pretty scary. Those guys were pretty icky. Um, and then of course they got past that part of the quadrant and they got into the Borg territory and that was Borg for then on in with seven and nine and species eight four seven two, which I liked. But nothing from one episode impacted the next episode, unlike Battlestar Galactica. So Voyager was supposed to be that. They had set it up like that, and the executives chickened out. They wanted an episodic show. So whatever happened in the episode before did not even continue. Like even Ensign Kim, <laughs> not to go off on this tangent, even Ensign Kim, first of all, didn't get a promotion at all through seven years and Paris got up and down and knocked around, whatever. But Ensign Kim was from an alternate Voyager, never mentioned again. <laughs> Naomi's mom didn't die. Never mentioned again. Like, oh, it was so, like, there was, there was so many holes of the entire series of Star Trek, of the entire um, of Voyager across seven seasons. But each, each episode as itself reminded me so much of classic Trek, first of all. Uh, and it had a lot of good moral uh, issues, quote unquote moral issues, and it had a lot of good, uh, a lot of good science fiction, a lot of fantastic, which is what DS9 did not have. DS9 did not have a good science fiction 
um, I don't know, history or, or appreciation of great science fiction telling stories. Like even TNG kind of, eh, with the science fiction, <laughs> right? It was just, you know, Diplomax and the Enterprise. Uh, but Voyager, they had a lot of fantastic ideas uh, of science fiction and, and, and the diplomacy and, and, and cowboy diplomacy, obviously, just like, again, the original series. Voyager reminded me more of TOS than any other series. <laughs> it really did. And I, I appreciated that. Um, but anyway, that's my rant about that. <laughs> How many more things can I rant about tonight? <laughs> um, I'm going to start lighting this thing. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do an addendum after it's all lit up. Uh, so basically what has to happen now, and I just put this back on, I'll take them off again. Um, there we go. So what, and I showed you another video. So basically I run the wires in the back. And then I drill the holes where the uh, life flight kits are going to be. And then that's it. Uh, so th from here on out, it's going to be another 20 minutes, half an hour. I do try to run the lights nice, uh, the wires. Um, but I'm not going to leave the, the video running for that because we're already at 30 minutes. And the, then it'll be an hour video and then you know, people aren't going to watch it. <laughs> not that they're going to watch 30 minutes of me ranting about stuff. Um, I want everybody out there to stay safe. Take care. I'm going to have a nice weekend just puttering with Lego and hanging out with the family. And uh, I'm going to stay off uh, my rant. <laughs> that's my that's my present to myself because I, I just get so uh, wound up by people being stupid and, and people are going to be stupid. So why am I getting wound up over it? They don't care. So uh, anyway... Uh, as of now, they're not impacting on my life or my family's life. So it, it is what it is. You're not going to change anybody's mind at all. Um, you're not even with facts and evidence and, and, you know, whatever. So, um, they'll, they'll, they'll grow up when they want to grow up. <laughs> and if they don't grow up, they're, they're probably going to make it through the world. They don't even have to worry about it. So, uh, that's it. That's all. I want everybody out there to stay safe. Uh, be kind to one another. That's going to be my new thing. <laughs> it's always been my thing, but. Um, be kind to one another. You don't know where other people are coming from. You don't know what uh, what's going on in their heads. They don't know where they're coming from. They don't have an idea of what they've been through. That's the other thing I'm really starting to really appreciate. Uh, I, I have uh, friends and family that have gone through a lot and stuff that I don't even know about that they're going through now. And I have an inkling, an idea, some a little bit, but I don't have a concrete idea. And I just... I'm here. <laughs> That's it. My, I've been, uh, I've, th many things have happened in my life. Um, I might talk about it at some point on Facebook. Uh, we just got through the let's talk thing and I don't want to jump on that because I don't want to, you know, I think, uh, businesses sh should not be publicly doing this. I think they should just be donating money, uh, surreptitiously or quietly to fund, um, fund these things uh instead of looking look, this the, hey look at me look at look at all the good work we do for the people businesses like no just if you want to donate money to uh people or organizations that help uh mental health then do it off the record <laughs> instead of like look at me i'm doing this good thing uh pharisees or sadducees whichever one that is i can't remember now i i don't have a lot of patience for that uh, if, if you want to, uh, do stuff for the world, then do stuff for the world and do it because you want to do it because it's the right thing to do instead of doing it for some publicity, but I'm glad you guys did it. Um, that company did it, uh, keep on doing it uh, again. Uh, my, my own personal thing is do it quietly, but you're not going to. So who am I? <laughs> so anyway, uh, everybody stay safe. Take care. I will talk to you guys soon.